very good morning to you guys welcome to asake online this is the breakfast club today on the show we bring you a different uh, show we look at development in different worlds across Bulawayo and today we want to profile different councillors across the city of Bulawayo and also what get to know uh, their what and what they do in their different worlds and joining me this morning is what two councillors as councillor Adrian Rendani Moyo to unpick and help us understand his what that's what to say welcome to the show thank you so much my name is Adrian Rendani Moyo I'm the councillor for Ward 2 in Bulawayo North constituency and I have been a resident of this ward for 39 years. Yes, it's 39 years that I've been staying in this ward. And uh, I became councillor after being elected uh, in the elections of 23 August 2023. If looking into ward, maybe give us a stretch in terms of boundaries. How big is your ward? Which areas does it cover? My ward includes uh, Baba Fields, then Tabas in Duna Flats area, and Pilo. It, and then from North End, it starts along Colin Brenda. Uh, it moves right up to South Town, Queens Park West. It includes areas like Tekele. It stretches right up to the airport. It also includes Richmond, Norwood, Aisle, B Farm, uh, and all those areas in between, like Trinance and uh, Harrisville. I know just a few months after the elections, I know you're still trying to find your feet in terms of being a council. How is it like so far being a council in this world? Being a councillor is actually not only an eye opener, mm -hmm. but it's now uh, at a point where I actually have uh, a very clear picture mm -hmm. about the concept of development mm -hmm. and everything that is involved in it. Mm -hmm. So far, have you done any consultation meetings, feedback meetings, or any what meetings in terms of your what? Yes, I have done a number of meetings. I had uh, a ward stakeholders meeting right here in North End, which included people from all corners of the ward. It included stakeholders from the business community with uh, representatives from the fire department, with representatives from the city health department. Uh, basically, most stakeholders had been invited and they did show up, even from the law enforcement uh, um, they were also there. And we've had meetings in some corners of the ward. Uh, we've had meetings in places like Queen's Park West. We've had meetings in Trinans. We've had meetings uh, right inside ASLB Farm. We've had meetings, uh, and we still have meetings that are lined up. We've had meetings in Sourstown, and there are meetings that are, are still lined up uh, in places that we also intend to, to go to and interact with the residents. Mm -hmm. You're mentioning all these areas, like your Trinance, your source town, your north end. How do you guys, um, it's a big word I know, how do you meet, how do you communicate with all these people, uh, different areas, different suburbs, your north end, your Trinance, how do you communicate with them? Uh, now, what is actually helping me is that most of these communities have got WhatsApp platforms, uh, which are run by uh, community leaders in those areas. And I have engaged those community leaders and they've added me onto those WhatsApp platforms. So I'm in touch with the, all the issues that are, uh, are prevailing in those wards. Uh, I'm able to interact with residents on those platforms and I'm able to give instant feedback on issues that require instant feedback. In terms of uh, challenges, what are some key issues that are raised in terms of the different, different wards, right? I know I'm part of one group that you are saying, I spoke about the issue of water, the issue of the refuge track. What are some of the key issues that are talking about in terms of ward two, facing ward two? Uh, the major issues right now, it's water, water availability. Uh, we have some high-lying areas where even on those days when water supplies have been opened, they actually don't get water. So... Those are some of the areas where we're having challenges. Uh, we have been trying to service them using our water bowsers, uh, but that is never enough for our residents. Uh, it has the inconvenience of making residents get out of their homes, carrying water containers to go and queue at a certain point where the bowser will be delivering water. And most of uh, the residents have been very clear that uh, while they appreciate the uh, Bowser facility, they are yearning for a situation where they will be able to get water from their taps. Uh, that is one challenge. And then the other challenge is that of roads. Uh, our roads, most of our roads have become impassable. 
uh, because uh, they've been depreciating over time. And uh, as a city, we have not been rehabilitating these roads at a rate at which we were supposed to. So those are the two major challenges that we are facing as a ward. I know the issue of crime as well. I should I, I call up person drug abuse. Speak to us more about that. How is so how dealing with the issue of crime in your ward and how dealing with the issue of young people being involved in drug and alcohol abuse? Um, the issue of crime is a very serious one as well. And what we have been doing is to encourage residents to form neighborhood watch committees uh, in liaison with our local uh, police officers. Uh, I have been interacting a lot, uh, for instance, with the officer in charge at South Town Police Station. They have been preaching the concept of community policing uh, to say, let's work together as communities and join hands with law enforcement. Uh, particularly, we have markings. Uh, we also have uh, vandalism of electrical power installations like transformers and ele uh, copper electrical conductors. This has really been a, a, a thorn in our side because uh, uh, it leaves residents in the dark and once residents are in the dark, they are exposed uh, to the likelihood of being victims of more crimes. We spoke about the issue of the roads, poor road right, is facing in terms of your heart, right? And the issue of the water. What's the maybe a short term solution for the roads and issue of the water? You know what? Uh, a short term solution, a short to medium term solution is what we are working on as a city right now. Uh, we need about $14 million to rehabilitate our pipes and duplicate our pipelines so that we can be able to, to deliver uh, water to, to our residents. We are also looking at a situation uh, where we ensure that our Nyamanjovo aquifer is fully functional and, and uh, fully secure because uh, what we've been dealing with is vandalism at that place. So once the place is fully secure, we know we'll be getting uh, the maximum amount of water that we can derive from that place, which is uh, about 15 megaliters. And then if we know that uh, our pipes have been rehabilitated or replaced and fixed to a point where we can reduce even water leakages, then we'll know that water that is being treated and pumped actually gets to the intended destination. And then regarding our roads, uh, we are looking at uh, focusing on transitional roads or transit roads, which link our different setups to the CBD. These are the roads that will be given priority and they will be attended to, first of all, before the other roads are attended to. Mm -hmm. You know what, there's Bobafield Stadium, right? There's Mpilo Hospital. I know today we're here at Northern Swimming Pool as well. Are you happy with this state of the swimming pool? And also, I spoke earlier about the school. Are you happy with the state of the swimming pool and the school? Uh, the school, uh, ACB Farm Primary School, I'm not happy with the state of the primary school and I'm not happy with the state of the swimming pool. I, for one, believe that this swimming pool has produced athletes, it has produced a lot of talent, and it has been a place where uh, young people are nurtured in terms of swimming. If you uh, take a look, you'll notice that right now, there are people who are actually being taught how to swim. Uh, this place needs a serious upgrade. Uh, I am grateful because I realized uh, uh, lately that the showers, have, uh, the, the showers have been sorted out, but we need uh, a full rehabilitation of this place so that it can meet international standards. And then I'll go back to the school. ACLB Farm Primary School is one of uh, the facilities uh, under uh, the council. And uh, my concern with that school is that uh, uh, the last the last uh, exams that were taken, out of 29 schools, it took position number 29, and it had about a pass rate of about 3.45%. And there are a number of factors that contribute to that. Number one, 
I am sure that uh, if you go to that school and you see the kind of accommodation that has been offered to the staff, it's really in a terrible state. So what can be done to us that, to, to solve that issue there of the price rate, number one, and infrastructure development, what can be done, councillor, to solve that issue there? That can be solved by addressing uh, the infrastructure at the school, number one, ensuring that uh, teaching staff have got decent accommodation, uh, ensuring that there is an arrangement to ensure that when teachers, are, uh, teachers that are not residing or, or at the school, have got a transport facility that takes them there because you cannot have teachers dropping off at a certain point and walking a long distance and then they get there they need time to rest before they actually start delivering lessons and we need uh, to improve uh, study facilities at the school so that even uh, the pupils have got access to good study facilities because uh, this is something that uh, requires a multi-sectoral approach. Everyone, every stakeholder has to be involved for that school to actually rise and deliver good results. A school of different groups, I know there are women uh, who are part of picking papers, picking litter, you know what, and the other women are part of um, a slashing as well, you know what. Talk to us more about that role there in terms of your art. Yes, uh, we have a community sweeping group. Uh, it comprises 10 women. Uh, these ladies uh, are actually responsible for, for ensuring that there is no litter on our streets and for ensuring that they, they identify uh, illegal dump sites and assist us to do away with those illegal dump sites. Their role is very important and so far they have been doing well because they flag all the dump sites that they come across and we work together. I'm also grateful to members of the community, residents, we have actually been coming forward to assist us in dealing with these dump sites. Some have been pledging vehicles to, to carry refuse from these dump sites to take it to the municipal landfill site. Uh, so these women are playing a very uh, pivotal role in keeping our ward clean. And then we have the team that is cutting grass along our main roads. Uh, it's comprised of men and women. Uh, the, there's also the number 10, yes. There's, it's a group of 10. So now they are also playing a, a, a good role because you know that if you can't see around the corner when you are driving, the, that increases your risk of having an accident. Uh, it's also good because uh, some of these places that they've cleared are potential hiding spots for people who do markings at night. So these people are actually uh, doing a wonderful job. I am grateful uh, to the city's uh, parks department and the city's health department for those two initiatives. It's really a great thing. It is my wish that we actually spread it, maybe especially the grass cutting, take it even further to make sure that uh, as much of our ward is actually cleared. Mm -hmm. Guys, if you're just joining us, this is the Breakfast Club. I'm talking to Councillor Adrian Arendani Moyo in a while to speak about the issue of water, issues of road rehabilitation. He speaks about the issues of water. Say so there's been a problem, each problem here in terms of water distribution and also having water in this ward. And also particularly each of the school now, again, uh, teachers are dropping in a far distance walking uh, to school there. But also let me bring the issue now of youth centers. I know we've been talking about youth centers. Some are saying they're now outdated. Are there any youth centers in Trenen, South Town, uh, here, you know, are there any youth centers? Uh, in my ward, unfortunately, we do not have youth centers. Uh, however, let me hasten to say, youth centers are not outdated. Youth, youth centers are still relevant because uh, 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 at what level we have been actually uh, partnering with different organizations to have safe spaces where young people can interact and uh, get skills and uh, get... Uh, education uh, that will actually help them to make the right decisions in life. You know, uh, we're dealing with uh, the scourge of substance abuse. And uh, it's, it's something that we cannot uh, uh, run away from. It's all over the show. And our word has not been spared from that. So youth uh, centers will provide safe spaces where we can actually protect young people from getting involved in substance abuse. Uh, at the moment, 
we have uh, some one or two projects that are actually ongoing in the ward. There is a place called Kabacha uh, Settlement. Uh, there is a, 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 a safe space or learning hub that was uh, funded by Plan International where girls are being taught uh, skills that will enable them to, to, to earn their own living. Uh, boys are, are being taught gender education and they are being taught how to conduct themselves so that they can be morally upright citizens of tomorrow. And the idea is also to teach them the uh, gender education so that we raise a generation of responsible young men and women. Uh, it will also prevent them uh, from falling into these social vices like substance abuse. So we are trying to engage partners uh, so that we roll out programs uh, that involve the use of sport, for example. I was in a conversation last time with uh, one gentleman who's running a, a football academy. It's called Mountain Climbers. We spoke about it and we are yet to finalize our working arrangement because all these things require a, a certain amount of resources. But I, for one, believe that our young people are worth it because uh, now uh, what we have realized is that we expect young people to take over the reins at a certain point. But it's going to be very sad if we get to that point and we find that the generation has been uh, decimated by substance abuse. So we are also uh, going to be rolling out a, a men's platform, a men for young men and old men. This platform uh, was created after realizing that uh, the young men of today <laughs> is not ready for the empowered woman. The young men of today uh, uh, has uh, been left behind in terms of uh, addressing mental health issues. If you look at the, the rate at which young men are committing suicide, it's really a cause for concern. So we are creating a, a, a platform for men. It will be a men's platform where men it will be non-denominational, apolitical. It will not be affiliated to any other organization. It will be just a men's round table uh, where men will meet and interact, uh, discuss whatever problems we're facing and learn from one another. So this is going to start uh, in Trinense and then it will spread to other, to other parts of the world. So this is one of the initiatives that will be coming up soon. And, and then uh, I also have an initiative that is very close to my heart. It's called My Sister's Keeper. It's an initiative where I assist young uh, girls from uh, disadvantaged backgrounds with sanitary pads. This initiative started during the COVID-induced lockdown when I actually realized that there was a serious challenge a lot was going on in people's homes and some of uh, these needs had been relegated uh, and they were being treated as secondary. So a lot of girls uh, were rendered vulnerable during that time. That's why I had to initiate that intervention. Mm -hmm. I know the Crop, crop, crop of Law councillors have been vocal about cleanup campaigns. I, I saw some of them doing cleanup campaigns in the CPD. Let's speak to your ward about your ward. Have you, been, have you been doing any cleanup campaigns in your ward? And what are you saying to residents around the issue of keeping your environment clean? Yes, uh, we have been doing cleanup campaigns. Uh, and uh, I am actually grateful to the business community of North End because they have been supportive. Uh, I will not mention uh, those businesses by name for obvious reasons, but they have been supporting such initiatives with different things, whether it's uh, refuse bags, uh, uh, gloves, and so on. Even Northern Sepap's clinic has been very supportive when it comes to cleanup campaigns. And uh, these are actually an ongoing thing. They are not going to be an event. Like I said, when I was speaking to residents in Queens Park West, uh, quite recently, last week, in fact, I was uh, speaking to them about the issue of keeping our areas clean. Because uh, in as much as we know that refuse has to be collected, we also have a res responsibility to make sure we package that refuse properly. 
and keep it ready for refuse collection. Uh, no one wants to be associated with debt or, or filth. Uh, we are living uh, in an era where we are still grappling with uh, medieval diseases like cholera, which we are not supposed to be talking about uh, at this uh, level of civilization. But if we want diseases like cholera to, to be a thing of the past, we have to practice uh, hygiene, uh, hygienic practices. We have to, to, to practice uh, cleanliness uh, within our yards and not only in our yards, but also on our streets. Uh, you know, it's disappointing sometimes. Uh, maybe you are standing, you are waiting to catch a, an ET into town or wherever. And then as that ET is approaching you, you see a water bottle flying through the window. You see, uh, people have this false sense of security when they are sitting in vehicles. They think they can throw banana peels out, out of the window. And once it's out, it's no longer their problem. But my message to the people of Ward 2 is that cleanliness will never go out of fashion. So it's something that we need to practice every single day of our life. Because uh, if you cannot be clean on the street, you are definitely not clean in your home. So we need to practice that cleanliness. We need to do away with these illegal dump sites. And, you know, if we have a, a clean ward, we are contributing to a clean city. And if we have a clean city, uh, we will have a clean country. I know you're just maybe a few months into this job, right? What are some of the current programs that are working in as a, as a ward, as a councillor, in terms of your ward? I know the issue of water, the issue of trying to recycle and do What are some of the key projects that you guys are working on in the coming few months? Yes, uh, we are looking at uh, our road rehabilitation, as I alluded to it earlier. And we are currently trying to educate uh, residents in the ward uh, on water con con conservation. It's very important at this stage because this water resource is precious and it's so limited at this time. Uh, we're trying to discourage people from habits that uh, are wasteful. You know, uh, in, in the days that passed, you would have people connecting hose pipes to their tapes and watering gardens. But now we cannot do that because the water that we have is very limited. So we are really uh, pushing that and uh, we're pushing an, a crime prevention campaign. Uh, this was uh, necessitated by the spate of uh, vandalism that was taking place on electrical power installations. And there were a lot of uh, 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 markings as well. So we are doing that as well. This is actually in motion. And then we have recently rolled out in partnership with other organizations, we have rolled out a, a, a series of meetings in the ward where we're targeting women that wish to embark on self-help self -help projects. This has actually started, it's in motion. So we have decided to combine this with a drug awareness campaign. So we're going to be doing this right around the ward, uh, projects for women and young people and a drug awareness campaign. Uh, we believe that if we empower our mothers and sisters, we have empowered families and communities. And if we spread the word uh, on drug awareness, it means the future will be in safe hands. Mm -hmm. I know there's a cholera outbreak in Harare and some parts of Zimbabwe, right? If cholera strikes in, what to? Are you guys ready for cholera outbreak? As in terms of hospitals or clinics in this ward, are there any cleaning materials that are you guys ready for cholera if it comes to Bolai well, in this ward? Uh, in as much as we do not wish mm -hmm. to be in a situation where we come face to face with cholera mm -hmm. at what level? Mm -hmm. uh, as a ward, we are ready. I have faith in the management and staff at a Northern Sepaps Clinic. We have had a number of mm -hmm. sensitiz sensitization meetings where we spoke about cholera, where we spoke about diarrhea, uh, and they have a team of community health workers. This team has been moving around the ward, uh, spreading the message far and wide yeah. to get people to actually uh, practice hygienic practices mm -hmm. and prevent cholera. Mm -hmm. Councillor, any closing remarks to your residents and what to, what can you say to them? There is a camera there. Speak to the, to the, to the residents in what to. Uh, to the residents in what to. 
uh, we have a lot of challenges that we are facing right now. But these challenges require all of us to come together as various stakeholders. These challenges require us to work together. I am happy to say these challenges might be difficult, but the solutions are not impossible. Let's conserve water. And may I encourage all rate payers to try as much as possible to pay their rates in US dollars, because all that we need to deliver these services to you is paid for in US dollars. Water treatment chemicals, the pipes that we need to lay to replace these old ones, anything that we need to use to render this service is paid for in US dollars. So please try as much as you can to pay for our rates in US dollars. I thank you. Councillor, thanks so much for your time this morning for coming through the Breakfast Club. It's nice to be, you know what, it's nice to be hosted by you in what too. Thanks so much, sir. You are welcome. Well, we've been watching the Breakfast Club this morning right here in North End. We're coming live from what too with Councillor Adrian and Dynamo. They're speaking to us about many challenges that are facing this world and the possible solutions. I hope you guys enjoy the show. And please do pass your comments there on the, on the comment section and to follow us on different platforms the site. We will love your engagement and love your feedback. We love to hear from you. From myself, Brighton Mube, it's bye for now. <laughs>